So this is uh, typed image-based programming with structure editing by Jonathan Edwards and Tomas Petrasat. Hello, I'm Jonathan Edwards, and this is joint work with Thomas Petracek. We program in the medium of text, but does that medium limit what programming could be? Structure editors treat code as a data structure with a set of edit operations on it. That makes a lot of sense, but after 40 years of structure editors, most people still prefer text editing. Maybe the benefits are just not worth the cost. What are the benefits of structure editing? Well, there's non-textual representations like tables or state machines. We can also prevent syntax errors from ever happening in the first place. We can also quarantine semantic errors so that an erroneous program continues to be runnable. We're proposing two new benefits to structure editing. Schema change. Editing a data type could adapt the data instances to match. And high-level version control. Based on edit history, not raw diffs. So for example, rename is a single change that doesn't conflict with any others. So let's look at schema change. Here's the definition of an address type. Let's say that we move the zip field up to the top, and we also rename it to be zip code. Now here are some instances of addresses. While we're doing this editing, we could have simultaneously adjusted all the data instances, moving the zip field up in all of them, and then renaming it in all of them. And now all the data matches the changed data type. But wait a second, how can a code editor change runtime data? Well, back in the Garden of Eden, code and data lived together harmoniously in persistent images. Live programming research often simulates this environment. But there was a problem in Eden. How do we share changes in our image with someone else's, like a collaborator or a user? And what if their image had changed in the meantime also? So Satan offered us source text files and version control, and we left Eden. But textual diffing is stupid. Here, it sees that the zip field was deleted and a entirely new zip code field inserted. It has no way of knowing that the data in the old zip field should be moved to the new zip code field. What we really need is the equivalent of version control for structure editing. Our paper develops a theory of what that means and how to do that. So we call images documents. Here's two of them, A and B. Documents record their history of edits. Each of these arrows is a primitive edit operation, like an insert or a delete or a rename. We compare these histories and calculate a new document called their agreement, called B ampersand A, which captures what the docs have in common. And we also calculate sequences of edits, which are the differences between each doc and the agreement. So this is like three-way diffing, where you compare two versions against a common ancestor. But what we're doing is we're computing a synthetic optimal ancestor. That's the agreement. And it's optimal in the sense that it minimizes the number of differences. Now we can migrate a difference to the opposite document. This produces a new version of the document B. It also produces a new version of the agreement because now the migrated edit is shared by both documents. Migration also adjusts the differences between the docs, the new docs, and the new agreement. Note that the migrated difference has been dropped. Migration always reduces the number of differences. Migrating all the differences from both sides is called a merge. It leaves them equal. Migrating the differences from one side is what Git calls a rebase. Git calls migration cherry picking. But unlike Git, cherry picking is the fundamental operation out of which we build all the others. You can read about the details of the theory in the paper. The question is, is it is this theory usable in practice? 
We've been building a prototype to find out. This is the difference view. There are two documents here on the bottom left and the bottom right, and they both have just a single field A, which is equal to zero. Above the documents is a command line. The left one is focused with a flashing cursor. A big problem with structure editing is making the UI as fluid as text editing, but that's not the problem we're working on, so we're just going to edit on the command line. So if I set A equals one, then we see now that A field in fact is one and it's marked with a blue background to show that it's different from the document on the right. We also see that up here, the edit we performed is recorded. These top two panes are the differences. We'll also see that after we changed A, it was selected, which is indicated by this green box around it, and also that when we select that field, the address gets filled into the command line for us. If I click over here on the right-hand document, then we'll select the A field there. And let's rename it. So now we see that the right-hand field is now called foo, and, th and that is with a blue background showing that that's changed from the document on the left. And we've also recorded that edit up above in the differences pane. Now we migrate a difference by clicking on this little triangle. So if I decide I want to migrate the rename to the left, I click there, and now we see that the field has been renamed to foo. And we also have deleted that rename from the differences because it's no longer a difference. They both are called foo now. We'll also see that here, the edit that when we had set A equals to one has now been adjusted to say foo equals one. Now I'll change the right hand side to B2. Now the differences have these little X's next to the uh, triangles. That indicates they're in conflict. That means that if I migrate them, I'm going to override something on the other side. They're not independent, and I have to choose which one wins. So for instance, if I decide to migrate the right-hand one, then it gets set to two, and there's no longer any differences. Both documents are equal again. Let's do the example schema change from earlier. Here we have addresses, which is a list of address records. A list separates the entries in the list with these horizontal lines. Each of them is a record. The first one we're showing here is the definition, the type of the records in the list, and we give it an asterisk address, and we call it the template of the list. The actual physically only and first record in the addresses list is Boston, and we index the records in the list with numeric indices. So let's add another address. We'll just append to the end of the list, and then we will um, create a new city here, state, Zip is 92014. Okay, and those differences have all been recorded above. Now let's say in the meantime, upstream changed the schema. So to do that, let's insert a new field um, in front of city, and we do this by editing within the template record. So we say, um, Insert. Okay, now we've inserted a new field in the template. It also replicated that insert here in the Boston record. And you'll see now that there's blank space over on the left-hand side to keep identical fields aligned left and right. Now let's um, move the zip code field up to that new record. So now we see that the zip field was deleted and it was forward to the new zip field. And that change was replicated down here in Boston as well. And let's 
Now rename that to be zip code. Okay. Now, if we were to go over here and edit the zip code of, of Boston on the left-hand side to be something different, and we migrate that change, so it's over here in blue, and we want to migrate it to the right, so I'm going to click here, and you'll see that it actually went over here and it got forwarded up to the right place, and now they're no longer, the zip codes on Boston are no longer different. All right, now we're ready to migrate the schema change down. So let's migrate the rename. Okay, zip code got renamed on the left. It did it in, you know, both Boston and Del Mar, as well as the template definition. And now let's um, migrate the move. So I'm going to migrate the move. And notice that the insert went along. The insert was a dependency of the move. And now um, it did. It did exactly that. Both Boston and Del Mar, the zip field moved up to be zip code at the top and retained the values that it had before. So that schema change. Another kind of schema change is, is just changing the type of a field. So for instance, we might want to make zip code be a number. So again, I'll edit in the template and I'll set it to be the number type. And we see if we go down here to Boston's zip code, it converted it to a number, took out the leading zero. But Delmar didn't because I had a typo, I used an O instead of a zero. So it's reporting that as a conversion error, but it's not actually wiping out the data so it's encapsulated that conversion error for us and you know we can fix it if we want to. This is still early stage work, but we hope it shows two new benefits of structure editing, schema change and high level version control. Maybe someday structure editing can help us return to image-based programming. Thank you.